On today's episode, I welcome Eamon Bell to speak about the wisdom of oat straw and how it nourishes our ability to feel our boundaries. When we're stimulating, we go way up these mountain peaks and then we crash back down because we're using up all our fuel and not resting. And when you are being nourished, you are still going up and down, but it's like small little waves, like the waves on a, on a gentle lake on a gentle day with gentle wind. Welcome to the Holistic Life Navigation Podcast. I am your host, Luis Mujica. I was sick and depressed until I discovered that I could make music, and then my whole life transformed because I began learning how to listen more deeply, listen to life, to the people around me, and to my body. And that's when I realized that the body speaks through sensations, and learning this new language meant relearning my body and mind. I soon healed myself of many chronic conditions and then began teaching others how to do so as well. Holistic Life Navigation combines nutrition, self-inquiry, and somatic experiencing to help you release stress and trauma just by listening to your own body. This podcast serves as a place to share my experiences as well as the experiences of many others who have healed and are healing through unique, unorthodox, and unusual ways. Your time to learn begins now. Eamon has been my best friend and my lover and my personal herb teacher for the last 12 years now. And I've learned a lot about herbs and my body and just how life changes when you bring in these plant beings and they become part of your culture. Today we talk about oat straw because it's been huge for my own healing, healing for thousands of my clients and students, and healing for Amens as well, because it nourishes the nervous system, it nourishes the adrenals, it nourishes the endocrine system in the body. And when we take something into us that's nourishing, it's the opposite of stimulating, and it's different than depressing. Nourishing is this place in the middle where it builds, whatever it is that nourishes us, builds our body's capacity to feel our authentic state. So if I'm naturally tired, a nourisher is going to help me feel that. If I have joy that I'm unable to access because I'm too stimulated or I'm too scared, a nourisher may bring me into my joy. If I have inflammation, which is a proper response to excess adrenaline and constriction in certain foods, a nourisher is going to eventually heal and remove that inflammation from my body. Taking in nourishing herbs like oat straw starts to change how we live our lives. We start to live our lives in a more nourished way. What we watch, what we think, the kind of people we hang out with, maybe even the clothing we wear starts to shift and become nourishing. We start orienting and moving toward more nourishing practices and habits and expressions. And by doing so, we create this beautiful world around us that helps our bodies build capacity for inevitable stress, inevitable traumas, and inevitable joys and beauties and transitions. So have a seat, take a breath, and check out this episode. After almost two years, I'm happy to welcome back to the podcast, Eamon Bell. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you. It's nice to be here. I've gotten so many requests to have you back for a long time, and it's absurd that you haven't been back. <laughs> <laughs> for many reasons. <laughs> for many reasons. <laughs> but I'm really happy that we're finally doing this now. Yeah. I have a Virgo taking over the podcast scheduling and so it's helping it's helping me get people on the calendar mm, virgos are great people uh, saying and we're both virgos all of those of you listening and camille is the virgo that helps with the podcast thank scheduling. you camille thank you camille so she has aiming scheduled to come on every month for like pretty much indefinitely until mm. i stop doing at the least podcast. once a month at least once a month yeah maybe you'll join the roundtable discussions too at some point yeah. but i'm so excited to have you come on and talk about oat straw because I remember how oat straw changed my life when you introduced it to me, which I'll talk about later. 
but tell us first, you know, anything you want to tell us, if there's something before we go into oat straw, you know, what, what you're mm. into these days, what you're feeling. Well, oat straw, oat straw is a really important herb. Um, but more than that, it's a really easy to use herb. It's an herb. It's funny when I was apprenticing at flower power, um, one of the herbs that we gave to everybody was nettles mm -hmm. because nettles is good for the kidneys. It's good for your adrenals. It's good for the skin. It's, it's such a, if you don't know what to give someone, give them that nettle sort of herb. But then we were joined by Kelly, who was a Taurus. And um, one day we were working together and she quietly mentioned, you know, we always give people nettles here, but I feel like because it's New York City, we should give everybody oat straw instead or milky mm. oats. And I sat with that because I immediately felt like, no, we give people nettles here, you know, but um, like you do, like you do. <laughs> We've sure, all had that response that. <laughs> many times a year, I'm sure. But um, I sat with it and I've really been sitting with it for years and seeing how, how people really are. And, and not that there's anything wrong with nettles. I drink nettles almost every day still. But oat straw and milky oats really have the benefits that most people are looking for in a practice, in a tool, in a breathing exercise. And all of those other things are great to use along with it. But milky oats and oat straw as an herb are just so, so nourishing for for our slowness, mm. for our nervous system, for our sleep, for our libido. So it's it's a full spectrum for people right now. I love the slowness piece because I've been really, since having COVID, I've been, you know, and Eamon just showed me her turtle necklace. We have this beautiful turtle that came to the land that our home is on. And it was really magical to see her second year in a row yeah. right dig a hole and plant her eggs there yeah. and so turtle medicine has been coming in and i had covid what like eight weeks seven eight weeks ago mm -hmm. and since then i've really been initiated into slowness and in so many places in my life and i'll talk more about it throughout the throughout the year but i think that the slowness piece is what i find so important with oat straw like how it invokes that in you and in, even more than invoking it, it nourishes you into that slowness mm. I remember when you made the first infusion for me, the first thing that I loved about it was how delicious it was. Mm -hmm. It was silky. It was sweet. It felt just like full of nourishment. And I wanted it. You know, some herbs you have to build your taste to and, and kind of decolonize your taste buds. But this one was just immediately so friendly, like in a flavorful, taste, tasty way. And when I was drinking it, it felt so soothing. And remember, every time I would drink it, like 30 minutes later, I would start to fall asleep. <laughs> And so, you still do that. <laughs> but it really, in, in those early days, I remember like when my adrenals were just blown, I would drink it and just, I couldn't even stay up for another half hour. Now I can drink it and at least feel sleepy. But before it was like, I had to go to sleep after I drank it. Can you tell us about that? Like what? Yeah, I have about? so much to add to that. First of all, I want to tell anybody who's listening that <laughs> you will probably not be immediately knocked out by drinking oat straw. I'm drinking it right now and it's not even noon. Mm -hmm. I'm drinking in the morning. Um, I can drink it all day long and all night long. Uh, well, not while I'm asleep, but so I can drink it throughout the day and only be nourished by it. Um, but it's interesting. I wanted to say something about the slowness because a lot of people are terrified of slowness. Mm. We are a nation mm. and possibly a world of coffee drinkers. Mm. Um, I know people who drink 17 cups of coffee a day. I know people who can't get through one day without their one cup of coffee. And as we know, coffee doesn't actually give you energy. It just cuts you off from your ability to know that you're exhausted. And the reason why mm -hmm. um, I believe that we are all drinking so much coffee is that we're doing things that we don't care about. And we need the coffee to make us believe that we care about things because say you're working, say you're working on a a series of paintings like, oh my God, I found these old pictures of my grandmother. I'm so excited to paint these. And every day, say you have freedom and every day you wake up and you're excited to paint those paintings. You actually don't need an, a stimulant at that point mm -hmm. because you're excited about your life. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to go to the job that you hate and to rationalize going every day, you do need a stimulant and you do need some, when you're doing something boring, you become exhausted. Mm -hmm. let's pause there that's so fertile okay. I, just, I just want to kind of feel into that yeah and let everyone catch up to that 
especially the piece of it doesn't give you energy. No, not think, at all. I think that's so important. Um, I've always found, I shouldn't say always, in recent years, I've I've learned how caffeine really helps us break our boundaries, mm-hmm. right? And so when you're saying going to a job you don't want to go to, being around somebody you don't want to be around, mm-hmm. in any situation, a crisis, whatever it is, yeah. the body says, I don't really have capacity for this. And then we reflexively go to a stimulant like caffeine. Sure. Some people go to cocaine or both. Mm-hmm. And you have this thing that pushes you. So it's not vitality, is no. it? It's a stimulation that that comes from your adrenal glands. It's not. And I'm actually doing a upcoming course about uh, having radiant life force, mm. which is the opposite of stimulating yourself. Mm. So having a radiant life force means that from your lifestyle and your food and your herbs and even even the thoughts that you engage in, that you naturally have lots of energy mm. to nourish your life. Mm. See, that's... I'm loving this because I'm learning this in my own body this year, especially I've, I've known it, but I'm only really learning it and experiencing it this year where there's a vitality in rest. Mm-hmm. And when you say energy, my mind still overcouples energy with stimulation. There's a different feeling when you have energy from vitality, from nourishment, from rest and slowness than when you have energy for energy from stimulation. Tell us, and I I know Ostral is a nourisher and brings us into that, but tell us how you and your body experience having energy from a place of vitality Mm -hmm. instead of stimulation. What's the difference? It's so different, Um, but it does take a little bit of practice to notice the nuances at first. So having energy in my body because of being nourished and balanced means that I sleep well without any extra things that I need to take before bed and that I wake up well and that I notice when I need to rest Mm. and that I love myself enough to rest in those moments. Even if it's, there's been times when we've been out um, with our daughter who's seven and I suddenly just can't engage anymore. So rather than reaching for some dark chocolate or a matcha or something, just saying, Hey, I need a break. I'm going to sit over here in the grass and close my eyes and recalibrate to my healthy breathing, to my deep breathing, to my relaxed state of mind, rather than powering through and giving you something I don't even have and then feeling resentful Mm. later. Mm. I mean, that's been the biggest healing in my relationship with you and how it's affected my life Mm -hmm. is like building this, not even building, but practicing like an open communication of saying, I don't have energy to connect to you. Yeah. <laughs> and at this point, when one of us hear the other one say that, I mean, I'll speak for myself. When I hear Please you, Please do. <laughs> when I hear you say that, this like relief comes over me. Yeah. I don't feel abandoned. I don't feel rejected. I don't feel worried. I'm like, oh, she's aware that there's not a capacity to connect. And instead of trying to connect and then turning into an argument, or us shutting down or me or me feeling kind of like wounded, like, why won't you look at me? There's just this beautiful awareness of I don't have capacity right now. Yeah. And then as you rest, it actually invites rest for everyone. You know, if we're in the car driving, let's say, and it's been three hours and you say, I'm going to close my eyes for 15 minutes and meditate. I need a break from connecting. Yeah. It also, Lyra, I'll notice, okay, Lyra grabs her book. Yeah. And she'll start drawing and I'll like hum you know, or go into my mind, like look around the landscape and I'll just enjoy feeling the silence in my body. Mm -hmm. So as a family system, even there's this practice happening of when one person gets activated, we're able to say, I need this space. And now I hear Lyra all the time, (laughs) you know, (laughs) right? Like she'll, maybe she'll um, get really angry suddenly and like, you know, holler and we'll say, what's going on? And she'll realize really quickly, I just haven't had any time to myself or I haven't had a break we'll say, oh, sweetie, take a break and she'll go crochet or she'll sit in her room and sing. It's amazing. So this transformation of just like, I think that the piece that's so important about what you're saying is when you have energy from a a slow, rested, nourished, vital place, Mm -hmm. that energy is in a transformative flow, a Mm -hmm. pattern that goes up and down. Right. Whereas when we think of energy, we think of like, I'm just bursting until I'm done. Right. That's stimulation. That's stimulation. Whereas healthy energy is, it's a living being. It comes up. And then it says, hmm, I'm going away for a little bit. Right. And you can't see what Luis is indicating with his hands, but I want to explain because it's important. When we're stimulating, we go way up these mountain peaks and then we crash back down because we're using up all our fuel and not resting. 
And when you are being nourished, you are still going up and down, but it's like small little waves, like mm. the waves on a, on a gentle lake mm. on a gentle day with gentle wind. So you're still going up. You still might realize, oh, I, I said I'd gonna, I was going to be here for three hours. Now I realize an hour and a half is enough for me. I'm going to go take my break now. You still have boundaries, but now they're, they're coming from a sane place in you. Uh, a sane place that is taking care of you and and your f- family system, your group system, your work system, uh, because of what you actually need. And mm-hmm. just having boundaries like that is amazing rather than constant. It's interesting because, you know, there's a lot of popular talk right now about people who break your boundaries and needing this and that and us as empaths. And I absolutely identify as an empath. But I, as as an astrologer and herbalist who work on with people one on one, I constantly meet empaths that are constantly breaking their boundaries. And when you're breaking your boundary constantly, whether it's through um, stimulation, not not taking care of yourself, you know, too much time online, whatever it is, not eating regularly, sleeping regularly, then that really it's like you can't tell. It's like you you, you don't you can't recognize the smell. Mm. Uh, or the feeling of having your boundaries in place properly for say 24 hours. Mm-hmm. So when somebody comes in a sneaking, sneaking sideways into your boundaries <laughs> in a way that, that you realize later, Oh, all these red flags, you don't recognize it. You have to have it in place yourself, not a hundred percent, but like moving towards it every day. Well, that's really brilliant because this, this conversation with Oatstraw, <laughs> which we've barely talked about. Well, it's interesting. Let's talk about Oatstraw. <laughs> well, we're going to, but what I love about it is you you have this wisdom from Oatstraw. Oh yeah. Like, the, like when we talk about herbs on this podcast, this is I think the second time, yeah. <laughs> which is crazy. God, I love herbs so much. Um, maybe third when the talk came on, we talked. Oh about yeah, herbs. yeah. But when we talk about herbs, you know, the herb is not this strategy. It's not this isolated supplement. It becomes a, a being in your life mm-hmm. as it becomes your cells. Yeah. And so the way you move, the way you think, the, the, the things you're attracted to, the way you look at land, everything starts to shift. Yeah. So one of the, we'll go into the reality, like the, maybe the more practical applications in a bit, but the spiritual, or I, I don't even, you know, I don't know why I like to not say spiritual. Maybe you don't like the way it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you should call it spiritual. Oh, spiritual. Um, well, you know, I love spiritual. I love spirit. I feel very spiritual. Uh huh. But there's such an overcoupling for me. Yeah. No, I understand. You know what I'm I understand. <laughs> there's so many words. Even when I said empath, I felt yes. a little tingle on my yes. back. Like mm, because well, it's because there's <laughs> because words take on uh, vibrations of their own. That's Is right. It's okay to say vibration. It's okay to say vibration. <laughs> I, I prefer vibrationes. <laughs> vibrationes. The tattoo. Um. Well, I want to say something well, can about... We, uh, can we pause that for a minute? Yeah, I want to pause soon and say I, something about some of the things you're saying. Oh, yeah. About. No, of course. Go ahead. Well, I want to say something about how when you're using herbs, when you're working with herbs, it's not just like a supplement. Mm. You're not just taking right. zinc and it's like, ooh, my immune system is up 70% because I'm taking zinc. Like, that's great. I don't see many people connecting to the personality of zinc necessarily, when you're working with herbs, the more you work with them, they really are like people. Mm. <clears throat> so it's That's like the word per- personality is personality. What I, what I replace with spiritual. Yeah, I think it's more accurate too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, so so it's like working with a person. So say you have a friend who's upbeat, but we're like really balanced, and she cancels when she needs to, and she invites you to things. Like she's a good friend with good boundaries. Having that friend in your life just automatically nourishes that part of you if you're open to it. You know, mm. if you say, wow, like Christine really, I, I love the way she canceled, but then she she showed me right away that she was still interested in hanging out. Mm. So there's that feeling of, <clears throat> of nourishment and getting to know a being and how that changes you. Like you, I like to joke although it's not a joke <laughs> that everyone who ever lives with me gets 500% healthier. It's true. And sometimes they stay like that and sometimes they move away and terrible things happen to them. Amon has this look of delight <laughs> in her eyes. She says this. It's true. She's a Venus in Scorpio. Well, it, I, that is part of it. 
<laughs> but my moon in Aquarius is also, you know, lovingly experimenting on the human race. That's true. With love, with love, with healing and love. But um, no, I mean, it's true. And any of you who've ever lived with me, you you know that's true, whether you want to admit it or not. The, do- the thousands of you that have lived with me. It's really, it's, it has been a lot. But so, so you just, you learn something different by being with a being than being with an object or a mm-hmm. product. Mm. And these things, these things, they are alive. They're growing from the earth. They are full of intelligence. They, it's not something like you take oaths and it's just like, oh, now uh, my nervous system is more relaxed. It's also, well, now there's more silica and mm. tons of magnesium. Oats has more magnesium than any plant. So and some good amount of calcium. So it's also nourishing your bones. Well, how good is that? Mm. It's also uh, a beauty herb. So there's, it's, it's like you're, you're with somebody wonderful. It's like you're with concentrated, wonderful energy Mm -hmm. when you're working with an herb and open-minded to it. If you want to take this work deeper into your lives, I strongly recommend joining my next six-week course. It begins on Monday, July 25th. There are three sessions every week for six weeks, and they're all live. Everyone gets a replay, and you learn how to heal stress and trauma through nutrition, herbalism, somatic experiencing, and self-inquiry. We meet three times a week for the six weeks, all the meetings are live, and everyone gets a replay. So even if you can't make it live, you'll still be able to watch and review. You'll have support Monday through Friday from me and my staff as you navigate the emotions and physical sensations that come up through this work. You'll even have options for one-on-one support. And we have a global community of students participating in this who will also be supporting you on our private online space called Circle. For more information on this course, visit holisticlifenavigation.com. Registration opens on June 30th, and make sure to register for the free Q&A session on that day so you can learn about this work and have some of your questions answered. I'll see you then. So you said exactly what I was trying to find the words for. It's like there's a personality to the plants. Mm -hmm. They are living beings. They have a whole intelligence. Yeah. When Eamon's talking about a supplement, you know, she's talking about how even the most incredible organic uh, whole food supplement is in a laboratory and is still isolated from something. So there's this isolate swirling in your body and your body is using it, the, applying it the best it can, yet it doesn't have the same intelligence as like the whole living being, right? Right. So when you have oat straw, and right now we're really talking through the lens of an infusion, yeah. which I'll let you explain what that is in a moment. Sure. Because some people may not know. But with an infusion, we're looking at this, you know, plant material that has been harvested from the earth, dried, and then boiled in water and steeped. And then you drink the strained water. And this, I mean, I'm looking at it right now. It's like cloudy and it has this beautiful kind of like yellowish hue. It just feels soothing to look at. And, you know, when you're talking about, there's one more piece I need to say about the wisdom that comes through the body from Ochtral before we go into, you know, what it does in the body is that piece around not being able to feel your boundaries because of being out of practice Mm. the stimulation of our bodies is what takes us out of practice from feeling these subtle shifts that we would call a boundary so when you're in the car and we're all talking and i'm laughing or i'm talking really fast and loud and then suddenly your eyes start to you know squeeze down a little bit Mm. you feel that tension that's one of your cues of wait a minute Mm -hmm. (laughs) i'm overextending when stimulation is part of the practice the body just reflexively stimulates through that and creates a hypervigilance to withstand whatever's going on yeah so this wisdom from oat straw really helps us really reminds us doesn't it to Mm -hmm. just kind of oh there's a subtle feeling that says stop yeah pause breathe what does oat straw do in our bodies? Like, wh- what is it doing when we drink it? Oat straw, wow. Where do I even start? <laughs> I mean, we've t- we've said a-, a few things about it. I mean, the main thing that oat straw and milky oats, which is part of the same plant, and the milky oats uh, is like the seed part of the top. And it's amazing if you boil it afterwards, there is like 
this wonderful mm-hmm. sticky sweet milk that comes out. Mm. And yeah. we're talking about the oat plant. Just the oat, people are yeah, knowing yep, it is, is the same oatmeal. plant. This is the, the grass of the oatmeal. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Oatmeal has some of the same benefits. It's not quite the same, but um, you can get some of the same benefits. It's also rich in silica and, and some other things. So what oat straw or milky oats infusion does in the body is, first of all, it very strongly and deeply nourishes your, your nervous system. So it actually helps to repair your nervous system. Mm. So some herbs, um, wonderful herbs like passion flower, valerian, herbs that people use for sleeping, this is much different than that. So mm. although oat straw will help you sleep, but a passion flower or a valerian you use to kind of knock yourself out in the mm. moment or a California poppy kind of thing, like somebody who is so wound up that they cannot sleep. Then you take something like that. And even then it's, it's like a train to like that. Just you're stopping the train with the valerian or the, or the passion flower. It doesn't necessarily stay stopped. You know, often you still wake up in the middle of the night, but at least you get some sleep. So with oat straw, it's actually helping to gently repair your nervous system. Um, slowly, you, you definitely get some benefits the day of, but if you drink it every day for a week, you're naturally going to be sleeping better. Mm. You're naturally going to be waking up easier. That That's a really big thing. I mean, to have natural energy. And again, it's not stimulating you into waking up. It's not like, oh, I can't move till I have my oat straw. It's not depressing you like a sedative. Exactly. It's not depressing you at all. It's, it's, so it's, instead of, it's not stimulating. It's not depressing. It's nourishing. simply nourishing. Simply nourishing. Yeah. It's relaxing because... It probably wouldn't be if we weren't such a stimulated society. Yeah, oh, but it is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I give it to to our daughter, and she drinks it during the day. It's not like she passes out or anything, you know. I was very proud of myself because the other day I had it all throughout the day, and I didn't once fall asleep. Wow, well, you are coming <laughs> to a new Louise. You're becoming a new Louise. Well, when what will I do with you? I, I mean, remind me. I think the first time I had it was when we lived on the Black Clove. I don't think I had it in the city very much. Really? Actually, that's not true. I used to have nettle and oat straw blend. That was yeah. like our thing. In the yeah, city. yeah. Uh huh. But I didn't have straight up like thick, dense oat straw tea until we moved up here. Mm-hmm. And we had started, Eamon and I started this business, um, when was it, eight years ago, called the Pinecone Apothecary. And uh, <laughs> I'm laughing as I look at you because no one could pronounce it. And so it was like the worst business name ever. <laughs> it seemed very simple to us, but people would look at the name and say the pineapple... <laughs> A cop a, a <laughs> yeah and so it didn't take off very well actually it did pretty well it did great but we just didn't want to do it anymore we didn't want to do it yeah i was touring with rasputina at the time so we would be going into all these towns and every town i went to i'd bring some of our products to these like herb stores and witch stores talk about overstimulating and overextending <laughs> yourself he was already playing music driving late into the night and managing a band and working uh, part-time as a therapist on the road with right, my clients so i'd be bus. in the back of the rv in the bed like bumping up and down the highway yeah. <laughs> talking to you somebody really, about you drama needed the oat straw. you really needed well, the oat straw. that's actually what i'm saying because when i got back from tour and during those couple years i was so stimulated so stimulated mm-hmm. i wasn't doing i wasn't doing coffee i thought like oh i'm doing but what how many chocolate bars were they doing before breakfast three as breakfast <laughs> as breakfast yeah because the pine gun apothecary made chocolate bars oh such good i mean burdock the ginger <laughs> seaweed rose oh God, the seaweed hawthorn one. Rose and strawberries. Rose and strawberry. And then there was the lavender one. Ooh, yeah. And the burdock one was like a ginger oh, burdock powder. And, and then the truffles, the, the caramel. Yeah. The those burdock, were burdock caramel too. truffle. Yeah. yeah. So it was the best chocolate you ever had. And we had baskets of it around the house. So yeah. I would just eat chocolate all day and work my ass off. Yeah. Then Eamon was making me this really intense, like deep oat straw. And I would drink it and immediately, you know, like t- literally 10 minutes later, have to go to bed. <laughs> And I'm saying all this because it was different from being sedated. Because yeah. I would drink it. And I didn't feel a sedated feeling. I didn't feel drunk. I felt I felt like the oat straw brought me into my nature. Mm-hmm. The chocolate and my adrenaline and my thoughts and watching things and working was stimulating me out yeah. of my actual state. Yeah. And the oat straw was like, I'm going to massage your nervous system so you can actually feel how you feel. Yeah. So my exhaustion was opposite wasn't be- of coffee. Yeah. So would you say the exhaustion wasn't from the oat straw? The oat straw brought me into my natural right. exhaustion. Right. I mean, I wouldn't even say you were experiencing exhaustion. I think you were tired, mm. and you were finally able to feel 
mm. the natural urge of like, okay, I'm hungry, I eat, I'm thirsty, I drink, I'm tired, I sleep. That's how I felt. And then waking up, I never felt hungover. I felt so alive. I mean, I was vital those years, even though I was breaking all my boundaries, yeah. be probably because of the oat straw. Yeah, partially. So I'm just saying that because I think it's important. What when you think of nourishing, whether you know this intuitively or scientifically, mm -hmm. like what's what is nourishing doing for those listening? What does that mean? Well, thinking of all right, thinking of a nourishing meal versus a fun meal. So say you're on a road trip and you stop at a fast food place. You're with your friends, you're getting French fries and oh, yeah. milkshakes with artificial flavoring <laughs> and 70 grams of sugar and who knows what else. So so that's um you're eating it. I mean, it's coming in and eventually leaving, right? So mm. you're eating. But imagine um, say a macrobiotic meal. Mm. There's like steamed vegetables and a homemade tahini and some like wonderfully soft beans cooked with seaweed and a homemade mm. tahini. Did I say a homemade tahini? Yeah, you can say it twice. <laughs> a homemade tahini that's twice homemade. So eating something like that, it's actually feeding your cells. It's actually feeding every part of you. And that's part of the essence of, of a macrobiotic meal in mm. practice. That's that's what's happening. I mean, there are times when you might need. Somebody offered me coca leaf the other day at my shop. <laughs> I won't say who, but somebody, uh, and you know, that's the leaf you make cocaine out of. And I d don't even want that in the unprocessed form because I, I do not want to be stimulated. Mm -hmm. So stimulated takes away from your energy and actually even depressing your energy herbs and practices that depress your energy and make you lethargic that also drains you as well so you're moving away from your center and sometimes you need to take something to fall asleep but for the most part i mean anybody who i know who takes things chronically to sleep they're not doing very great during the day i think it's a really important piece the way you broke that down like with the meals yeah. because if i think of the fast food we think of that we we all know this term now empty calorie mm -hmm. where there's like a ton of calories coming in but they're empty they're void of nutrition so if we think of that with stimulants and depressants sure they're creating a ton of adrenaline or sure they're suppressing adrenaline mm -hmm. but they're not actually nourishing anything right so if i'm in a state of malnourishment yeah. or like rupture yeah nothing's being repaired right right and that's the important piece here yeah it's like if you are living a lifestyle that causes you to need something to fall asleep every night. Yes. Like great for you if, if the valerian is going to work rather than, you know, a pharmaceutical, which is more addictive and more repressive and has way more side effects. Great for you. But imagine it's like, you know, you're in a baseball park and those baseballs are firing at you and the valerian helps you hit one back. But if you're still in that situation where your baseballs are being fired at you, you it's not going to help forever. I mean, it's a temporary situation. Mm -hmm. And I think so many people right now, and I applaud them for this, are learning that those are temporary situations and are excited and eager to get into their own energy and to work from that and see who they really are without a stimulant and a depressant. Like, who do you have? Like, if you need a coffee to see your friend because she's so annoying, then do you really want to hang out with that person? See, that's the wisdom right there. Of, <laughs> that's of, my deepest wisdom. That's deep. Well, it is. And, you know, from the Ostral, that's really the wisdom is like when you said, if your life is causing you to need a sleeping pill. Yeah. I think these things are so important. And it's the way I like to speak so much in my practice with, and with people and on this podcast is if we can't sleep every night, if we have insomnia, there's nothing wrong with your body. That's like a really healthy response to your lifestyle. Yeah. And the stimulants or depressants help you continue the lifestyle. Yeah. But if you go to it, like this goes back to what you said probably 20 minutes ago, you said scary, scary mm. to slow down. Yeah. When you start drinking Ostral and your body feels a nourishment, <clears throat> not a sedation like when you smoke pot and you feel otherworldly. Yeah. Or, you know, a rush when you have coffee or cocaine or chocolate. Yeah. But a nourishment, it literally brings you, settles you into yourself. Mm -hmm. And yourself, your body, let's say, might have a lot of stored pain and grief and, and resentment, like you said earlier, from decades of boundary violations because of stimulants. Right. So there is a fear of, first of all, feeling that and imagining because you're getting closer to it. And just what we have over coupled as a nation. Yeah. And as a people with progress, right? Like oh, what yeah. slow means for us. Absolutely. 
and and I keep wanting to touch on that slowness idea too. So it's not that oat straw is going to make you lethargic. You're not going to be noticeably slow <laughs> to other people. This isn't something like you're on opiates and you're moving and talking slow. Mm. When I say slow, I mean slow compared to being on stimulants. Mm. And I mean slow compared to overriding your body's words and voice to you. That's what I heard. Yeah. So I want I want to be clear about that. When we say slow, Luis and I have uh have learned to love the word slow. I know a lot of people still to say the word again are scared by the word slow. How am mm -hmm. I going to get stuff done? Yep. Well, how are you going to get stuff done when you are angry and stressed the entire time? That's right. Like if you got everything done but you're so stressed at the end of the day that you can't sleep. Like is that the life? Do you want to look back on that and say, "Well, I got everything done, but like where where did you sink into the moments and enjoy them? Mm. I mean, I really love that reframe or that that deeper um, kind of subtle awareness of slow mm -hmm. because it's not lethargic. Lethargic is from actually stimulating and depressing. That's Absolutely. lethargic. That's yeah. lethargy. But when I hear slow, when I hear you say it, I, I feel like when I'm more in my body and not stimulated out of it, mm -hmm. I'm not dissociating. Right. So the messages are slower. Yes. Right. So if someone says something that doesn't feel right, it slowly comes through and I'm able to process it in that moment mm -hmm. instead of I'm, I'm so sped up that I can't even feel what I'm feeling in response to my environment. There's like a slowness in even receiving the world. Yeah. Even right now, I feel like I'd like to just slow down mm -hmm. <clears throat> myself. <clears throat> One time recently in meditation, I heard the words, your pace is your peace. And I, and I spent the day working with that. And I still go back to that of, oh my God, there's so many times where I'm getting ready to go out. And I just go into a frustrated place mm -hmm. because when you're getting a child ready or, you know, working, I'm getting rid of a lot of clutter right now. So there's a lot of extra stuff in the entryway of the house. So, but my pace is my peace. So I can either spend all of those moments at my own pace mm -hmm. And feeling peaceful, or I can try to save one or two minutes. Even when you're driving, if you ever notice, when you're rushing, you're you're. It's a form of stimulating yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be drinking caffeine or having mm -hmm. a matcha or something. You can stimulate yourself simply by getting out of your own pace. By talking fast. By talking fast. By talking loud. By trying to overcome something else with your energy. I mean. Yeah. Because that's what we're doing to ourselves, right? When we're stimulating or depressing, we're trying to overcome something painful. Mm -hmm. we're, like you said, we're avoiding something painful in ourselves. And to have something that lets us sit. And again, this is not ayahuasca. You're not going to drink your oat straw and suddenly be like, my mother never loved me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but it is, I mean, you do get more out of it when you have a, a journaling practice or something, you know? I mean, I would even like disagree with that a little bit because i think sometimes it does happen it happened for me but i mean it's not a psychedelic experience no, it's it's, it's very not. much i mean the whole thing about oat straw is you are not being taken out of your own mm. self mm. stimulate it's not a psychedelic it's not stimulating it's not depressing yeah it's definitely not and i think <clears throat> it opens up this new daily personal culture and practice of like naturally moving toward nourishers yeah right so your your food might become more nourishing the music you're listening to might become more nourishing and so when i was saying i disagreed not with the psychedelic part <laughs> but as you get more nourished and you get away from the stimulus then these things that you've been stimulating unconsciously away from or avoiding yeah then they're they're present for you and I mean, it's why oat straw is a huge part of my course. You know, it's, it's one of the herbs in the, in the happy nervous system mix. Yeah. Because it gives people the capacity to even feel the rush that comes up when they start sitting with their trauma. Yeah. <clears throat> I did a class last year on um, life-changing herbs for stress and anxiety. Mm. And there was a body week, a spirit week, and a heart week. And body, so much of it was about oats. <laughs> because... Although, and it's also great for the heart, you know, it's amazing for your physical heart. It helps here heal, uh, clear out excess cholesterol from mm. your arteries. I mean, there's so many side benefits to using oats and oat straw. 
But I mean, these these bodies that we walk around in, and they are these encyclopedias or mm. these these Bibles, the nerve Bible, mm. as Laurie Anderson says, and it is all there. I mean, I sometimes read the Akashic records, and that's basically like a record of your body that you're mm. given the tools to translate. I love that. Yeah. So when so when we are working with the pace of our body, I mean everything really changes you know your your libido changes it can go from being kind of like a manic libido or a lethargic libido you know where it's like oh i don't know if i'm interested in in sex or intimacy to a balanced libido mm-hmm. where you're where you're attracted to things i don't even want to say things that are good for you but you're actually you're being turned on by what actually attracts you um, and this again isn't like a magical mm-hmm. wand where it instantly happens, but it moves you towards that direction. It's used a lot, and uh, we—it's funny because I—I I was saying to one of the apprentices the other day, like, did I just make all these blends? Because we have herbal blends for tea. Did I just make all these blends to make people drink oat straw? Because <laughs> <laughs> all I think all of them except for triple root and cough it up all have oat straw. So mm. love potion. Mm. Oat straw, rose, hawthorn, Damiana, um, happy and nervous nourish system. Blend. Yeah, happy yeah. nervous system, which you use in your course and, and nourish. They're all the main ingredient of all of them is oats mm. because it's so good giving. And w- what you mentioned at the very beginning was it's it's delicious as well. And that's something that I love about it too. There's not like a bite back in any way. You're not waiting for the other shoe to drop like okay, I took my CBD and Mm. I'm sleeping well, but tomorrow I need my coffee to wake back up. Mm -hmm. Like when you're using oat straw, not only is there not that kind of other shoe that's dropping, but it just purely tastes delicious. It's easy on the system. There's some herbs like licorice where you drink them and they're very sweet or even uh, black cohosh. But then there's like this kind of like awful aftertaste Mm -hmm. and oats is just such a wonderful herb Mm -hmm. like we have a cat named selkie and she's purely sweet i feel like it's a very strong yeah Yeah, she's just it's not like oh you're petting selkie and then suddenly she bites you or Mm -hmm. she like looks at you with hate (laughs) how some you know some cats are like that Mm -hmm. but it's just there's just like oh it's it's it really embodies the the good enough mother energy and they even Mm -hmm. say the myth of it is that gaia herself the earth herself suckled on mm. oat straw. Oh, I love that. It's like the breast milk of the land. Yeah. It's interesting because, you know, when you're talking about the nourishing, and you're talking about the libido, mm-hmm. you know, my experience has gone from mania mm-hmm. into much more nourishing mm-hmm. where it's like even sexual expressions feel better through a state of nourishment than through a state of thrill. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I, I think, I, I just wonder how that intersects with with sexual mm-hmm. organs and oat straw mm-hmm. because I've given oat seed to so many men who were infertile yeah, and then they were able to, you know, help someone bear a child. So what, tell us about that piece. Well, one of the things, one of the many, many, many benefits of oat straw is it's very nourishing <clears throat> for your entire endocrine system. Mm. So it's not like taking an artificial pharmaceutical hormone. It's not like adding a fake hormone to your system. It's actually giving your endocrine system and hormonal system what it needs to build the hormones that are part of the proper, you know, um, dance or orchestration of the body. Mm-hmm. So part of that is the reproductive system big time. Mm-hmm. It can help women with fertility. As you said, it can help men with fertility. Um, it's amazing. I mean, for men and women with, with not being able to be turned on, I notice, you know, I'm in, I'm older than I was 20 years ago. <laughs> um, and even though I'm still a Venus in Scorpio, there's times where I just feel I'm, you know, after mothering through COVID and stuff, I'm certainly not as easily turned on as I used to be. But when I drink oat straw frequently or every day, like I pretty consistently have cervical mucus, which mm. is something that you have partially that shows you that you're fertile. Mm. Um, and partially that shows you that your body, you know, under the right circumstances with the right partner is open to sex. Mm. So when you're not, it's not just like you have to imagine, you know, you actually see it. I mean, yeah. people use it for ED. It's biological, you're saying. Yeah, it's biological. I mean, it's also, if there's many, I mean, myths to me are, are just as real as, as anything else. If they function, you know, a myth that function. But I, I wanted to say people use it for ED all the time, too. 
which I like to call exhausted dick. I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> you can say what you want. I love exhausted dick. <laughs> exhausted dick. Because it's, I mean, people, sometimes men, it's hard for men, you know, they think like, oh, they, it becomes like a personal mm-hmm. downfall mm-hmm. in a way. And when it's just like exhausted dick, well, it's just exhausted, you know. Especially when we're talking about boundaries. Oh, yeah. You know, if, if your sexuality has been used performatively, you mm. know, you'd like sexually fond. Yeah. A, a exhausted dick <laughs> or exhausted pussy, like whatever we're going to call it. Yeah. You know, like these, these are, again, just like we're talking about not being able to sleep because of lifestyle. It's a healthy response to finally catch up to your body's boundary. Right. So I feel like I love the idea of this nourishing those sexual organs back into a safety and a balance too. Mm-hmm. I mean, one more thing I want to ask before we go into one more question and we have to close. Only one. Only one is, um, I'm so curious, like, I hear you saying it's a nourisher. Yeah. And it nourishes the whole body. You're talking yeah. about the heart, the endocrine system, we're ta- which encompasses the adrenals, the thyroid, mm-hmm. um, the nerves. Mm-hmm. Is it safe to say it's a full body nourisher? Is there anything it doesn't nourish? Is there anything you want to add to what it does in the body? I mean, Yeah. One thing, one another, another thing that's so amazing about oat straw is that it's actually really great for blood sugar. Mm. So, I mean, there's just so many things I feel build. Is that because the minerals? Like what? Eh, the minerals and even just the gentle sweetness of it. Mm. I'm not sure exactly, but I mean. When you talked about the minerals earlier, those are the minerals that help with blood sugar. Yeah, so like magnesium and, yeah. and silica. Yeah, the, the heavy hitters. So yeah, it's it's a gr- it's great for for blood sugar. So if you want to drink it at night, sometimes you wake up with your blood sugar being balanced. Mm. It's something that I use when I'm fasting. Mm, me too. It yeah. helps a lot with that because you can get the big dips, especially at the beginning of fasting when there's still still different functions going on in your body that have to do with eating and digestion. Um, it's ama- I mean, it's ama- It's just amazing. It's amazing for your skin, your teeth, your bones, your hair. Mm. Um, it's a great beautifier. It's a great happy herb. It's great for little babies mm. to drink, mm. elderly, pregnant women. I mean, I don't know anyone who's actually allergic to oats. I know some people who are sensitive to oatmeal mm-hmm. because oatmeal is often made in the same factory on the same machinery that wheat and gluten grains are so if you're eating oatmeal and you're having a a celiac uh you know like a Mm -hmm. gluten reaction to it then it's not because there's gluten in the oatmeal but um i'm so glad you said that there's a common misunderstanding that oatmeal has gluten oatmeal has gluten but inherently on its own it is a gluten-free plant yeah it is is yeah the process and this is also not this is not the oatmeal part of the plant Mm -hmm. yeah i mean basically what oat straw does is makes you happy and things that you kind of attribute to aging it helps you with Mm -hmm. so if you think like oh it's because i'm getting old that i can't do this or it's painful to do this well working with oats is is going to help that and it's not that it will on its own make you immortal Mm -hmm. there's many other parts to that practice in the world but it certainly is a huge tool of as as the years go by just enjoying the time in your body more you know Mm -hmm. so this is the last piece okay tell us how to make an oat straw infusion and how often to drink if you're just starting and you want to start experiencing some of these benefits we're talking about sure so uh, i often don't measure things but if you're using a four cup jar so first of all you want to use a glass jar with a metal top a nice canning jar a ball jar or a bell jar So you want to use at least a cup of oats to that size. Sometimes we use the larger eight cup jars and then you use at least two, two scoops. Um, You want to get this loose. Don't get tea bags. I mean, if that's all that's available, then of course get that. But, you know, many wonderful herb shops, including mine, sell it in bulk and and health food stores. So you're going to take at least a cup per four cups of water. You're going to boil water. Pour it on top, gently stir it, stir it so that herbs are saturated into the boiled water, and then you're going to cap it, and you're going to leave it alone for six to eight hours, and then you strain it. And I'm actually drinking it a little bit early because I just wanted some for my day. Mm. So it's not going to harm you if you drink it earlier, but if you let it steep for 15 minutes and you throw away the herb, you're throwing away all the minerals and all the benefits of it. Um, Yeah, and you can, I mean, you can drink it daily you can drink it all afternoon i mean there's times that i drink nettle all morning mm-hmm. and then around three or four i switch to oat straw mm-hmm. you still want to be drinking water 
because you still want to be drinking water no matter what you're doing. <laughs> you don't want to ever get out of practice with that, but you can drink. I mean, you could drink eight cups a day because of the magnesium. It could loosen your bowels if you drink a lot. I think that's only happened to me maybe one time after drinking like four cups at night on an mm. empty stomach. But yeah, I mean, you can drink it all day, every day, really. For, I mean, you can drink it for years. It's a food. So it's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. say you're eating um, broccoli. You can eat broccoli every day. You could eat it three times a day. It's not going to harm you. You're getting all the amazing, you know, and all three carbonyl <laughs> that you get from that. You could eat broccoli every day for the rest of your life. And if you have a small amount of broccoli or a large amount of broccoli, it's still beneficial. And that's the way it is with oat straw. If you're suffering from like chronic exhaustion, make sure you're drinking it every day. So people who are listening to this and they're thinking, I really want to work with Eamon. Like I need a guide. I want to take your class or I want to hire her for a session. Yeah. Where do they find you? Well, right now, things things are in the works. But right now, you can find me at ArtemisRisingHerbs.com or you can email my assistant, Kalsa, at info at ArtemisRisingHerbs.com and she will hook you up with an appointment or she will hook you up with any classes coming up. She's very... She's very good. She's rich in executive function. <laughs> <laughs> and she's a wonderful person. Well, thank you, my love, for coming on. Yeah, of course. And teaching us about oat straw and nourishment and slowness mm -hmm. and listening to these parts of us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. My question for you is, where do you feel the episode? Take a breath and just notice. What's your body doing? right now sit with it let it speak to you and let whatever comes up come up and your only job is to listen for all the wisdom you need is right inside of you to learn more about my work you can visit holisticlifenavigation.com and sign up for my mailing list you'll receive a weekly newsletter with specific monthly topics free resources and upcoming events you can also follow me on Instagram. If you like my podcast, please leave a review and share. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. <laughs>